Here it is, the all new 2020 Ford Explorer Hybrid. And yes, there's approximately a 5,000 pound boat hitched to the back of it. This is the first drive review. Let's take it for a ride and see how it does. It is an all new Explorer because Ford completely changed the platform. It's now rear wheel drive biased. The limited hybrid you see behind me is actually an all wheel drive model and you can have the hybrid in either all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. But the new platform allowed Ford to stretch the wheelbase over six inches, push the wheels out to the corners, change the styling to be a little bit more aggressive and also make for a better towing vehicle because longer wheelbase means more stability I really want to see how it drives. I'm just going to creep forward and listen. You should not hear anything because it's just electric mode going forward. It's pretty neat. Like if you're creeping through traffic, you barely have to use any gas. This is a first ever Ford Explorer hybrid. And under the hood is a 3.3 liter naturally aspirated regular V6 coupled to an electric motor. The electric motor is actually sandwiched between the engine and a 10 speed automatic transmission. Yep, there is no CVT, no continuously variable transmission in this hybrid. But let's dig deeper and look at the cutaway of the system and see exactly how it works. Let the experts explain. So what we have is we have a 3.3 naturally aspirated engine and that's paired with a 35 kilowatt uh, high voltage battery. So while the system is certainly all about the battery, we also then drive um, our vehicle with our 10 speed modular hybrid transmission. Now this transmission is based off of our 10 speed architecture, it comes out of Livonia transmission, same as our base 10 speed that we have in the rest of our explorers. Okay. Um, we have 90% part commonality. Uh, between the two transmissions and it really gives us that flexibility. The lug points for manufacturing and where we mount to, uh, all the same going down the okay. same line. Um, if I walk from front to back, the electric motor is a 35 kilowatt electric motor paired with our 35 kilowatt battery. That's about 44 horsepower. Inside of the electric motor we have a disconnect clutch and what that disconnect clutch allows us to do is it allows us to operate engine only, it allows us to operate electric motor only to propel the vehicle, or it allows us to combine the two as a, a bit of a, a torque and a, a power boost. And so, you know, in a traditional uh, combustion engine, you've got uh, a ramp up to the peak torque level. Yeah. Our electric motors have that instant torque, so it gives us a nice complement where we're able to fill in that space, okay? Behind that disconnect clutch then, um, we have, with our torque converter, um, the ability to get the torque multiplication and the damping in the system that we need for trailer tow. That arrangement gives us the ability to uh, collect regenerative braking energy. And so what that is, is taking the kinetic energy when a vehicle is slowing down, mm -hmm. feeding it back through the electric motor, using it as a generator, and feeding that energy electrically back into the high voltage battery. And we do that at about 90% efficiency. Okay, so the total horsepower output is 318, total torque is 322, those are pretty good numbers, but there's still one number we don't know, which is probably the most important one. They're not ready to uh, say what the total EPA fuel economy estimate is. We'll have to wait a little bit longer, but Ford says total driving range is 500 miles. We actually do have EPA numbers for fuel economy on the 2.3 liter Explorer. And let me drive that one really quick and actually show that to you. I interrupt this Explorer hybrid review with this, the XLT model, because I wanted to show you the base engine Explorer and talk a little bit more about the fuel efficiency Let's look under the hood really quickly. Ford is targeting the hybrid powertrain as the most efficient 
Explore powertrain. But since we don't have those EPA numbers, let's quickly take a look under the hood of this XLT Explorer with a 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder, which is the base engine. 300 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque. It's also made it to its 10 speed automatic transmission. And then rear wheel drive, like you see here, the rating from the EPA is 21 city, 28 highway, and 24 combined. It's better than most of the competitors, but the hybrid has to be better than that. So we'll have to wait a little bit and see how the hybrid does. By the way, this XLT costs about 42,000 bucks. The maximum towing rating on the Explore Hybrid is 5,000 pounds. If you want to tow a little bit more, you can get the V6 turbocharged 3 liter engine in this Explore for a total of 5,600 pounds of towing. This trailer weighs just about 4,700 pounds, so we're nearly maxing out this hybrid. And this trailer is equipped with a surge brake, which means when the vehicle slows down, there's actually a piston that pushes brake fluid to the brakes on the trailer to help stop the trailer because the Explorer does not come with an integrated brake controller for electric brakes. So this setup is still very legal and very safe. As soon as you start talking about towing and actually carrying people and cargo, you want to talk about payload. This particular all-wheel drive Explorer Hybrid has exactly 1,240 pounds of payload. When you consider about 470 pounds on the hitch, you still have about 800 pounds of usable payload, which is nice. Okay, the engine comes on. I can definitely tell there's a trailer behind me because even though this Explorer Hybrid weighs about, what, just over 5,000 pounds, the trailer weighs almost the same and the trailer is kind of trying to move the car just a little bit. It's very controllable, I just can tell it's there. Inspection is very smooth. Yes, it did squat a little bit with the weight of the trailer, but there's no issue whatsoever from independent suspension all the way around. All-wheel drive system also has a disconnect. The front axle can be actually disconnected to improve some efficiency. I noticed that I drove about 12 miles and it says I went one mile in electric only mode. So overall it seems like it's up to about 10% depending on your driving condition I can do on electricity alone, which is uh, actually pretty impressive for a hybrid system like this. Usually when you're towing a trailer with an SUV, you can kind of hear the coupling of the hitch and the trailer it bangs sometimes. It's not the case here. I think this trailer is set up really well. It's level and I don't hear anything. No chains banging, no coupler banging back and forth. The overall experience is pretty nice. Perhaps the biggest surprise of the Explorer Hybrid is actually that it's available currently only as a limited trim. What does that mean? That means it has a starting price of about $52,000 because you start with a limited Explorer at about forty-eight. The hybrid system adds about $4,000 to the price. And of course, the model you see here with all the options is about $57,000. At that price in the three row crossover segment, actually does not compete against the Toyota Highlander or the Honda Pilot. It begins to compete with more premium SUVs, maybe an Audi, a BMW, something like that. If you're wondering about the base price on the Explorer, it starts at about $33,000 for a rear wheel drive base model with a 2.3 liter turbo engine with 300 horsepower. There is also the three liter twin turbo V6, for the XLT that starts around 37, 38,000. The Limited starts at 48 with a V6 twin turbo. And of course there's also the Platinum and XT models, which are at the top end of the range. And 
The new Explorer comes with a host of driver assistance features. Copilot 360 is available on every Explorer, but you can get a couple of additional premium assistant features. Let me demonstrate two of them to you. These are brand new. So one of the new additional driver assistance features is called reverse brake assist. Let's say you're backing up, you're not paying too much attention, and there's an object behind you, and actually it hits the brakes for you, I didn't touch it, and avoided the collision. So that's a nice feature. It can recognize objects like cars, people, or some objects that are actually higher than the rear bumper. That's pretty neat. The second new feature is Active Park Assist 2.0. What does that mean? Well, you've probably already seen and used the first system, which allows you or helps you park, but it only takes care of the steering. The 2.0 system can also take care of the braking, shifting gears, and accelerating. So the system is supposed to find a spot big enough for the vehicle. There, it just found it. It tells me to shift to neutral. And then I have to hold my finger on the parking button here on the center console. And then I'll let go of the steering, let go of the pedals, and it should do it for me. If I feel uncomfortable, if I let go of the button, the thing pauses. So let's try that. All right, so it's taking care of the steering now. I'm not touching the pedals. And it's going pretty fast. I can control its speed a little bit with the brake pedal if I wanted to. Okay, I haven't touched anything. I didn't shift gears. Now it shifted into drive for me. It's trying to just kind of level it out, line it up, reverse it. It says finished. One interesting note, as we've been filming for the last 10 minutes, the Explorer has been on, but the actual engine is not running. It's just been using its electric energy system to maintain air conditioning and actually the infotainment system, which is pretty cool. But I really like this interior actually, because it's got multiple colors. And yes, some of the plastics are a little hard still, but the overall design is pleasing. It's more roomy. The whole interior is about 40 millimeters wider. The whole Explorer is not wider on the exterior, but they've made the interior more usable. And let me show you in the back seat, actually. The actual legroom didn't change that much from the previous generation of the Explorer. But like I said, there's just more width. The center seat, these captain chairs in this case, do slide back and forth so you can get comfortable. I'm just over 6'2", and when I sit up straight, my head does hit the ceiling but have enough legroom. The panoramic sunroof for 2020 is also enlarged. Overall, it's a more luxurious place to be. And of course, there's a third row, so let me uh, get back there as well. So the Explorer is actually still has a maximum capacity of seven people because there's only seat belts for two in the third row and the legroom is actually not bad yes my knees are way up high but headroom is actually really decent and it's a surprising thing considering how sloped the roof is and by the way I still have air conditioning the car is still operational even though the engine is not running if you're left alone in the back seat you can still use the tab to actually move the seat forward or you can also push the button on top of the seat it will kind of move over for you and then you can reach the door handle and actually get out for a big guy like me it's still not very easy but it's doable I found the boat ramp, yes. Let's see how the cameras work. I have a front camera and I can select a few options. Okay, there we go. I can get lined up. Now I can see a 360 degree view 
as well as a backup view in one. Alright, there's a zoom in view, but I need to zoom out a little bit in order to get it lined up. There's no tr pro trailer backup assist. If you really needed that, you would have to get the Expedition, which actually has a much higher towing rating, and you can launch bigger boats with that and make it easier. But here it's very simple. I can actually see around the boat and control it very nicely. All right, now I need to pull out of the boat ramp. I need full power. The good thing is that Ford is also partnered with Yakima on their accessories, so you can get racks, bike racks, other accessories. And of course you can open the hatch remotely as well. And you have to be mindful so it doesn't hit the trailer. But behind the third row there is about 18.2 cubic feet of cargo room here. And although there is a little bit less cargo volume behind the third row than the previous Explorer, the 18.2 cubic feet is actually better than some competitors like the Toyota Highlander for 2020 with just over 16 cubic feet of space. Of course you can fold the seats in this case using power button and the middle row actually folds manually. Because Ford stretched the wheelbase on the new Explorer, they also improved the approach and departure angles. Up front, 21 degrees of approach. It's about 5 degrees better than before on the previous Explorer. In the back, 22 degrees of departure. And because of a little bit additional ground clearance, better breakover angle at about 17.1 degrees. Overall, those are pretty decent numbers for a three-row crossover. As you saw on the cutaway, the battery is on the passenger side behind the second row, fuel tank is on the driver's side, and they're both kind of tucked in, so the ground clearance is the same, no matter if you have a hybrid or a non-hybrid Explorer. Here's a question. Which other Ford vehicle has a 3.3 liter naturally aspirated V6? Yes, it is the Ford F-150. What if, and I'm just speculating here, what if Ford put this hybrid system into a base F-150 pickup truck? I think that could be really doable for a base truck, not a high-end F-150, but for a base one, having this capability of improved fuel economy, and greater range, that could be really nice. I wonder what Ford is gonna do. The new Explorer Hybrid is just full of surprises. First of all, I was really surprised that it's only available in the limited trim at a higher price point, but it's also a fairly smooth overall system that has a little bit of electric range even when towing a fairly heavy trailer. And go back to tflcar.com for my news views and real world Ford Explorer reviews. Look at that, there's something lurking in the field. One of the most iconic movies of all time, one of the most iconic SUVs of all time, Jurassic Park. 